Hey, take care. Happy, happy hiking. Good luck to you. Well, that is it for the cookie lady. What an idyllic place. You have got to come and stay here. Um, last night was like, I don't know, yesterday was just awesome. It really was. I think I shared that in the previous video. Uh, so today, what we had, last night we had uh, a lot of traffic here. Let me get back to it just a minute. But just suffice it to say, the cookie lady here was awesome. Greatly enjoyed my stay. And we'll chat more up trail about it. Good morning, Appalachian Trail community. This is day four. Is that right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yep, day four. So, uh, stay at the cookie ladies. This is me leaving. Hated to leave. What a awesome experience. Just so hospitable. Created such an, a little idyllic community there. There's a um, girl from Belgium. Uh that is staying there and like work for stay or whatever because her visa expires she's not gonna be able to finish the whole trail so she is staying there and working around the house they have a bus that typically you can rent out for you know like a mini bus like the short bus uh that you can rent out you know for the night whatever but um, it wasn't available because she was there and she's staying in it. They gave that to her. So, um, <clears throat> but what they'll let you do is they will let you work for stay in food. So it's just amazing what they do. So she fixed a great stew last night. I had an option of stew or hamburger. Well, all I had to do to get the stew and to uh, sleep in the hangar on a bed and an under in a nice dry spot was uh, go out and pick a large can of large coffee can of uh, blueberries so this is a cookie lady farm it's a big blueberry farm they got tons and tons of blueberries and that's kind of backbreaking work to be honest with you uh i've done a lot of backbreaking work in my life and I guess I'm getting old or carrying a pack for a long ways or whatever, but anyway, that was, uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, tough. I almost said, heck, I'd just rather make a donation. They do work. They do take donations well. I kind of got the feeling I didn't even have to do that because there was a group came in, uh, younger folks after me, and she fed them, but they did not stay in the um in the hangar uh, she had them tent in the yard and the yard was saturated okay so i'm in the middle of a deforested area and um trying to find the blazes kind of hard sometimes okay so uh stay there awesome uh last night it poured like 49s and uh several times so I'm expecting the trail to be very muddy and very buggy. Uh, one of the things was um, that, uh, let's see, I lost my train of thought. So, oh, I know. So the first thing, this is a picture of the first thing on the trail this morning that greeted me right off the blacktop. And now... I mean, this stuff, I'm going to have to try to rock hop. All right, here we go. And the only reason I'm doing that, oh, this will be a nice broad jump. It's because right now my feet are not totally soaked through. Like last night, at some point, they just got totally soaked through. I'm like, bad the heck with it. Just walk right through the middle of it. But right now, they're kind of semi sort of dry. And I got a blister between my right pinky toe and the next toe. I don't normally get blisters with my Njinji's liner socks. So, but I did. And dealt with it. 
it's about the size of a dime um so the longer i can keep them dry the better but at some point it'll be inevitable before i get to tonight's destination i'll be wet and i'll just be slogging through it and i'll have stuff in my pack that won't ever dry right now everything's dry thanks to monica you're the heat monica trail angel from pittsfield all right so i am doing 11 to upper goose pond there's a really cool shelter there that's run by i guess the amc appalachian mountain club that's a huge club you know it spans a couple states so it's right at a pond it's an old cabin vacation home that somebody bequeathed to them and uh so they are uh they run it there's no power there but there is natural gas mm, no running water but the care there's a caretaker so the caretaker will uh will feed you pancakes with real vermont vermud maple syrup in the morning so that'll be neat so it's only 11 miles and looking at it normally i wouldn't stop at that but then it's either like an 11 mile day or a uh a, a 20 mile day which eventually i'll have to do that and we'll chat about that down on trail a little further today uh so let me let me filter my way through this bog here all right chat with you in a bit well i thought i'd chat a little bit to you here i thought it was a less muddy part of the trail but i don't think there is such a thing today this week but so one of the things about hiking is you can avoid your socks getting completely saturated as you hike your feet will generate heat and dry them out if you're constantly stepping in water of course that's not going to happen but as much as you can avoid it you know there's always hope that there's not that was the last mud puddle <laughs> so that's that's a fool's errand but you know while folks are hiking out here while we're hiking um in addition to how far to the next um trailhead or for our next road cross crossing or just when will i get this mile done uh and those kind of fade into oblivion you're just kind of hiking but you think about stuff and one of the things I've been thinking about is um, a good friend of my parents and really a friend of mine as well. Somebody I grew up with, their family uh, passed away the day before yesterday. Her name was Joan Flowers. She died of cancer. Um, she had been in pain for a while. And you, know, you kind of get a little ticked off because you go to a doctor and you have this pain and the doctor in your hip <clears throat> and the doctor tries to send you to physical therapy for it or something it's not getting any better it's getting worse and just goes on and on hard to see a doctor <clears throat> uh hard to find one it'll take you serious if you're a doctor watching this, sorry. You feel defamed. Maybe you're one of them. Hopefully you're not. But in any case, eventually she did get to see somebody who was willing to prescribe a scan that she'd been needing all along. And come find out her pain in her hip was not due to orthopedic issue. It was due to cancer in her hip and she'd been living with it so long because of i'm not gonna call them misdiagnosis i'm gonna call them stupid diagnosis that by the time they figured it out 
it was too far gone too much wrapped around whatever to treat it and is inoperable so they sent her home under hospice care which lasted all of about a day or two on morphine so you know, she didn't know who was around her her last days and it's just unfortunate cancer is such a beast i mean that's straight from the pit of hell and if y'all watch my channel you know my lifelong buddy darren who's dealing with glioblastoma which is a another terrible terrible cancer with a limited life expectancy and so they are doing what they can um to give him as much life as possible his boys who are adults are over in norway he's from norway well i'll take it he's from the u.s but married a norwegian met her in college moved over there had children raised a family uh and him he and his wife were divorced but still had sons he loves very much and he and his ex-wife are are still good friends as well but his boys um you know he's wanting to see them again before his brain gets to the point where he'll know what he's looking at and he um i'm thinking about doing a gofundme for him to get his boys over here i mean they're adults but uh it is very expensive they're just starting out in life and of course the cancer treatments and stuff that he's taking is you know like in the millions so that's that'll bankrupt somebody um but you know those of course joan her being a a very devout christian i know where she's at and i'll be looking forward to seeing her one day up there in heaven around the throne uh and um you know now we're just left with uh her children to miss her and her husband who's still alive fred um my parents are 84 she was 84 -ish, maybe 82 i'm not exactly sure but somewhere right around their age mom and her used to walk together her and another good friend of theirs sally barker and they would i don't know walk six miles a day mom would walk twice she'd go to the y and walk in the morning and and then go walk with joan and sally uh in the afternoon so anyhow uh so there's a lot of things you have dedicate a hike to so today i'm gonna dedicate it to uh joan's family don't have to worry about joan anymore um she's in good hands but uh dedicate to her family and then of course uh my buddy darren um i'm gonna be thinking about them both those all day long and for me i pray for people and if you're watching this maybe you could do the same or send them good vibes whatever it is you do uh, we're all inclusive here and i just want you to um want, want them to be able to feel the love for me it's the love of god but whatever love you can send them that would be awesome all right oh gosh see if i can get through here relatively oh nope that didn't happen all right let me let me shut this down see what i'm gonna do here so this is how easy it is to get turned around so you can't you see where i came from i mean there's a break in the trees but don't look like no trail and you come up here and you're like okay where does it go do i cross you know, i'm looking for a blaze somewhere across there no that just looks like a wash where the freak do i go from here wait a minute wait a minute All right, there's a blaze way back up in the trees there it is 
That does not look like the trail. A, tra a trail. That looks like a creek. So, yeah. It's easy to get turned around and lost. And if, of course, I got far out, but I didn't have that and it wasn't blazed. Darn. I'd been lost in the woods. All right, so I had a drop box sent to the uh, Berkshire Lakeside Lodge. Uh, very nice people here. Uh, not a little gruff, but, uh, but they do welcome hikers here. Uh, so they take boxes, didn't charge me for my box. Uh, also, let me use this area right here to take my box apart. Uh, they let hikers fill up their water right there. Um, muffins are two bucks over there, a uh, dollar for a tea bag, thought it was a little steep, but, and then they got drinks for a buck as well, so, and then they even got a hiker box over here, so, very uh, accommodating folks here, greatly appreciate them dropping the box off, and they let me come inside where it's relatively cool uh, to change, to sort through my stuff. And I got way, way too much food, so I am on my way to Lakeside Lodge. Can't figure out a way around not doing a 19 mile or so. I guess I'm stuck with it. Uh, and not tomorrow, but the next day. And um, so, yeah, go to Lakeside Lodge, short day to day, 11 miles. And uh, hang out there and get pancakes in the morning and head on out. All right, so let's mosey on over to the lodge. This is Interstate 20. Got a bridge here to cross over and then a little ramp comes around here and takes you on across 20 so you don't have to play Frogger. And apparently this region is that I'm in is the Berkshires. So, hadn't quite figured out what that is. Is that a, you know, some type of a I think it's a, a region like where the mountains and stuff are up around here. Is the way Monica, the way Monica explained it to me. I've always heard it like one associated with dirty dancing or something like that. Uh, so anyway, real busy highway. So glad, glad they uh, you can't see squat close to the chain. But anyway, glad they got it here. Now that's one lane of traffic. I still got to get across this other lane of traffic up here. We'll see how this works out. Oh, same thing up here. Yep. All right. Seen one, you've seen them all. Let me get rid of this thing. Oh, by the way, so I'm hauling, got my mail drop. I tell you in woods, it's too freaking loud. All right, it's official, I'm a freaking idiot. So I stopped down there to Berkshire Lakeside Lodge, Motel Motel and got my food dropped called out everything that I wasn't going to need which is probably two to three pounds of food uh because as usual i packed my fears and now i've mailed my fears idiot uh but anyway i didn't want to leave it down there because i figured there'd be more hikers up here at, at the cabin i'm doing uh, goose pond cabin so I was going to take it here and see if they had a hiker box, whatever, put it in there. They actually had a hiker box down there. Well, what I didn't realize is, I didn't look at gut hooks before, this is the heaviest my pack's been the whole time. I can't even shut the whole thing, I've got so much food in it. So that's the hill that I've yet to climb, and this is the hill that I've just climbed. So. If I'd known that, I'd have left it in the hiker box down there at the Berkshire Lakeside Lodge in the heck with hauling an extra two pounds. Now that don't sound like a lot, right? You go buy two pounds of hamburger meat, you're not carrying a lot. Well, you add that to what I'm carrying now, I'm probably carrying 32 pounds. Stupid. 
Plus, I got a brand new resupply. This is the hardest hill I've liked the whole time here. Oh. So, anyway, and temperature's gotten up to 86. And the humidity right now is in the... It's got to be 80% higher. I'll put it to you this way. It's the mug of the rocks are sweating. <laughs> Seriously, they'll look wet. All right. Let me go on up, get up to up a goose pond. There's no way around it. I'm going to have to um, stay there. Um, tomorrow will be a 15 mile day. The next day, a 19 yuck. Uh, and then the final day will be a seven day, a seven mile, excuse me, and I'm out. Which will be Thursday. So I'm getting out a day early. And uh, then I'll get Johnny Mac it's going to get me to the airport and I'll decide um, you know see what I can do as far as switching flights what time I come out Friday I mean Thursday what time I can get a flight what time he can get me to the airport all that's kind of in flux so I'll figure that out I mean worst case scenario um, I got a flight Friday so at five so what time it leaves at five there's a morning flight that leaves Friday and there's also a morning flight um, that leaves, I mean, an afternoon and an evening that leaves Thursday. So I could get those. We'll just see. It's all up in the air. I'm not trying to push and do the big miles to make it out early, but the problem is the way the shelters work here and the way the tenting work here. And so they have campsites and, tent and shelter sites, and you're not supposed to stay anywhere else. And there's very, been very little sh stealth sites that I've seen. Uh, so yeah, it's just the way they work out with the mileage. I don't really have much of a choice in that. So it's either going to be a 19-mile day day after tomorrow, or today it was going to be a 22-mile day. And I would have missed the um, Upper Goose Pond cabin, which they say is a don't miss. Uh, and it's supposed to rain tonight, so I'd rather be inside. Let me get on up there. It's like noon 30. Now let me get on up there and stake my claim, get rid of this food, and... I might just go for a swim in the pond. All right, chat with you later. Oh, one more thing. Today, I'm devoting day to cancer awareness and really to my good buddy Darren. Been thinking about him all day long and I've been praying for him all day long. And tomorrow will be my family. I'll be doing the same thing for them. So I'm going to devote the ne next couple of days to whatever is out there. But today's to Cancer and Darren and Joan Flowers' family, uh, Fred, Lee, Jessica, and Lori. Not in that order. Uh, random order. And uh, be praying for them in the passing of uh, John. All right. Let's go. All right. So I am getting all I can out of the AT. I decided that I was going to make the best of a short day. And so today was like 11, 12-ish. So I am at Upper Goose Pond. I've already been swimming and now I'm canoeing. Woohoo! place up here on the lake where they got all these carns that people have come out and made them uh, that's pretty cool and there's this island out here in the middle winds picked up so it's like blowing me i'm going to get back to canoeing but yeah neat 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 lake uh to just get out on and canoe and just enjoy the at uh all this on the land over here is um national forest service I think there's a couple cabins that still have leases for like 10 years and then it reverts to the government and it was all given to them probably life estates or something like that but anyway i'll show you a few more shots on my way back in i need to I'm get blown way away all right this is our bunk for the night so this is upper goose pond cabin and uh, it's run by the AMC. 
So upstairs we got the bunk room. I think there's like 16 bunks or so. And down here we got the kitchen, kind of a dining area. Uh, over there, uh, the, down to the beach and takes you down to the waterfront where they got a couple canoes and stuff. Yeah, so that was really neat. Got to go down there and go swimming. And then I hadn't been down to the dock. So probably go down there in just a minute. But uh, gorgeous, gorgeous lake. Uh, really nice setting back in here. It's about half a mile off the rest of the trail. Um, off the AT. Um, it was a family's, uh, family's cabin. And they donated it to the AMC. And so there's no power here to have gas, no running water, no places to eat out back. Uh, they do have the propane out back and a place to wash up. I believe that's the caretaker's tent over there. So I hadn't looked at that kiosk. I'll go look at some of this other stuff in just a minute. But anyway, pretty neat, pretty neat little place. Uh, on the trail so you need to stop in here War rumor is he's going to be making pancakes with maple syrup in the morning there was some eggs down there I almost bought them but I didn't want to carry the weight <laughs> I was already carrying three pounds of food so I'm going to leave that some of that food here for um, kind of the hiker box so in case somebody shows up doesn't have enough but yeah, this is usually adorned with stuff trying to get dried out. And, um, yeah, we'll go ahead. There's nobody in here, I don't think, right now. So, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look inside. Yeah, if we can pick it up. Yep, so it's just kind of the old way of doing stuff. Alright, so, day... Let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, wait a minute, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay, <clears throat> day four, wrap up. So obviously, I did not get a chance to do that last night. Uh, I was too busy chatting with folks. There was about 17 plus the caretakers, maybe 18 yeah, uh, at the uh, Upper Pond Cabin, AMC Cabin. And you really, you got to include that as part of your trip. If you have, if you've done a, if you, if you haven't done that, you haven't done all the AT in my opinion. It's just, uh, it's actually off the AT a half mile, but it's well worth that half mile. A lot of neat talking to the hikers, met so many. Met people from North Carolina, met people from Austria who, you know, are taking four years off. Of course, they don't have kids, so they don't have kids, so they can do that. Sell everything they got, put it in their parents' house and come to the U.S. I'm not sure how they do the visa part of it, but anyway, went swimming, went canoeing, uh, sat around and chatted. Uh, just really neat getting to meet people and hear their stories and stuff. So that is it for day four in the books. And we will move right on into day five on the next video. So appreciate you and we'll see you out here.